everyone. Today we're going to be starting probability and I'm going to introduce to you basic laws of probability. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm going to show you some simple probability. So these questions are going to be pretty simple. So starting with question one, students were required to choose either music or art and biology or chemistry. Okay, so what is the probability that he or she, so A, choose art and chemistry? So these students, they can choose music or art and they also have to choose chemistry or biology. Okay, so here are the science subjects, biology and chemistry, and here is art and music. Okay, so they can choose um, two subjects. So what is the probability that he or she chooses art and chemistry? We'll have a look at this. Art and chemistry, six people choose it. So out of 28 students, if you add all of these up, you'll get 28 in total. Six out of the 28 choose art or chemistry. So just simplify it and you should get three on 14. Okay, so do you get the idea? So it's very, very simple. Now, B, did not choose music. So let's have a look at our table again. Who did not choose music? Only these students, because this column is the column for music, so it must not be these students, it must be any of these students, okay? So 13 out of the 28 students, because seven plus six makes 13. Okay, so that's how we got that one, so very, very simple. Now who chooses biology? Well, biology is this row here, so seven and four students, so in total, 11 out of the 28 students. Now D, did not choose chemistry or art. Well, if they didn't choose chemistry, so this whole row here, or art, only four students chose biology and music that's not gonna be art or chemistry. Okay, so it's not gonna be this column, and it's not gonna be this row, so it must be just these students here. So four out of the 28 students. And to simplify it, you should get one over seven. That's the probability for D. E, who chooses biology also does art. Okay, so out of the people who choose biology, they should also do art. So these are the people who do biology, these are the people who do art. So the overlapping the common people are gonna be these ones. Okay, who choose biology and just that one there. Because this is the people who do biology and out of the art, only seven students. So seven out of 11. Okay, because it's going to be out of 11 guys, make sure it's not 28, because it says out of the people who choose biology. So out of the seven and four students, which makes 11 students, only seven choose art as well. Okay, so seven over 11, make sure they don't put 28. Now F, who doesn't do art, does study chemistry. So out of the people who don't do art, which are these students, because this is the column for the art students. So these are the students who don't do art, right? Now out of those students, who studies chemistry? These students here, okay? These students study chemistry as well as not choosing art. So 11 students out of the 11 plus four students, 15 students, okay? So again, it's not gonna be out of 28. All right, so that was question one, so have a look. And again, hope you thought that was very, very simple. All we needed to look is that table there. Okay, so let's move on. Question two, a player rolls two dice. Win for sum for of seven or 11. So the person who can win if they get a sum of seven or 11. They will lose if they make a sum of two, three or 12. And they will have to roll again for any other sum they get, okay? So this is our table here, and you can actually draw this yourself. Because we are playing with two dice, this is the first die up to one to six, and the second dice, one to six, and these are the all different types of possibilities that we can have, okay? So all the different outcomes that we could have. So if I have one and one, the sum will be two. We're focusing on the sum because this whole uh, winning and losing game is depending on the sum. So I've added all the columns together, so two plus two makes four, three plus five makes eight, etc. Okay, so just make a little sum table. And our part A says, what's the probability of finding, 
what's the probability of winning on the first roll? So if I want to win, the sum must be 7 or 11. So, see how these ones here and these two make a sum of 7 or 11? So how many is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's simply going to be 8 out of the total of 36 because 6 times 6 is 36, so there's 36 outcomes in total and only 8 makes the person win. Okay, and just simplify it to get 2 over 9. So that's question 2a. So see how I did that? All you need to do is do some circling or colouring to find your outcomes. Okay. Now b, what's the probability of losing on the first roll? Now it says if you want to lose, you have to have a sum of 2, 3 or 12. So find the 2, 3 or 12 there. So that's 2, that's 3 and that's 12. Okay, so I'm going to lose if I have these sums. So 1, 2, 3, 4 outcomes, so 4 out of the 36. So simplify it to get 1 over 9. And that's the probability of losing. Now what's the probability of neither winning nor losing on the first throw? So we don't want to win or lose, so we want to roll again. It means we want to roll again for any other sum apart from the 2, 3, 12 and 7, 11. So it's going to be the probability um, getting neither will be 1 minus the probability of winning and losing because we don't want to win or lose, we want to have just roll again. So if I find the, if I know the probability of winning and if I know the probability of losing, if I subtract it from 1, because guys 1 is the total probability, okay 1 is 100%, right, 36 out of 36 makes 1. So out of the total probability, if I subtract the probability of winning and losing, I get the remaining probability, which is the probability of neither winning or losing. Okay, so that's a little technique you can use. So you don't have to go ahead and um, count all those up. So we found winning in part A and we found the probability of losing in part B. So I'm simply going to subtract the probability of winning and losing from 1. And just calculate that. You should get 6 over 9 and simplify it to get 2 over 3. So that's the probability of neither winning nor losing on the first throw. So do you get the idea? So even if you don't, if you don't have this um, table given, you can actually produce that yourself, can't you? So it's a very good idea to do that and then go into the questions because that makes it a whole lot more easier. Okay.